Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. This is as good of a signpost of what we're dealing with uh, when it comes to climate change as just about anything. Uh, This is one of the most studied glaciers because it's so easily accessible. Uh, But what it indicates because of the changing patterns of winters uh, with less snow, longer, hotter summers, uh, Mm -hmm. is how rapidly uh, the glacier is receding. And it sends a message about uh, the urgency that we're going to need to have when it comes to dealing with this. Yeah, you know, here's here it is again, the big lie. Just the big lie, he keeps it up. You know, uh, another radical would be happy with having pushed socialized medicine on America or any of the uh, other signature events of the history of this radical and now giving Iran a path to a nuclear weapon, which we'll talk about today because it's astonishing <clears throat> that Kerry actually admitted why they don't have the, gut, the guts to stop Iran. I'll I'll play a soundbite where he gave it away. In the midst of his long-winded intellectualisms, Kerry actually said why they're not going to stop Iran now. And, of course, Obama is a maniac in the sense that he has no limitation on what damage he wants to do to this nation to bring it to its knees. So he goes up there, changes the name of a mountain to an indigenous name in order to get the people up there who don't vote to, uh, first of all, buy into his lie about fossil fuels, which supplies a good number of jobs and income to the indigenous people. So he changes the name of the mountain in order to sway them to his, his uh, false viewpoint. Nobody told this community organizer, apparently, about the Ice Ages when he was at Columbia. He was too busy reading Karl Marx and Saul Alinsky. There have been five Ice Ages that we know of dating back as far as 850 million years ago. The last one was in the Pliocene Quaternary era, which began about two and a half million years ago, Mr. Obama, and it ended 10,000 years ago. And Mr. Obama, I know you didn't read this in Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, but in these five ice ages, there was an in-between period. And in between all of these ice ages, Mr. Obama, the earth was warming for thousands of years before it began to cool again. And you know, Mr. Obama, what happens during the warming periods? The ice sheets melt and sea levels rise. Mr. Obama, I know you didn't study this at Columbia, but uh, I think your daughters are probably learning that in the seventh grade. Also, Mr. Obama, something that you didn't learn at Columbia is that when glaciers recede, what you find are tree stumps. What does that mean, Mr. Obama? Now, kind of put your thinking cap on, not your rhetoric cap, Put on your thinking cap, Mr. Obama. When glaciers recede, you see tree stumps. What does that mean? It means that not long ago, the glacier was in a similar stage as now, without global warming caused by any any anthropogenic source. Shall I go on, Mr. Liar-in-Chief, trying to con the world into this? I'll go on. Mr. Obama, you didn't learn this while you were at uh, Columbia University. But in the 1500s, the Vatican and 97% of the scientists in the 1500s, the Vatican, oh, wait till he comes here, the bouncer from uh, Rome. Wait until Rome sends their their bouncer around the world. The Vatican and 97% of the scientists in the 1500s said the Earth is the center of the universe, Mr. Obama. In the 1960s, while you were, I guess, a young man or young, young student, we were told, beware the coming Ice Age. It was in the front of Time magazine. In the 1970s, the the moron, Jimmy Carter, said the world will run out of fossil fuel in the next decade. That's Jimmy Carter. In the 1980s, we were warned that we're all going to die of skin cancer because of the hole in the ozone layer. In the 1990s, we were told that at the turn of the millennium, all the computers in the world will fail and send the world into chaos. In the 2000s, Al Gorleone came along and made a fortune saying, beware global warming. In 2010s, Uh, We were warned climate change will create monster storms and weather anomalies that are going to destroy the world. 
Mr. Obama look back because in the 1880s there was a very wise man named P.T. Barnum who wrote there was a sucker born every minute. Also, Mr. Obama, you may not have read this in your years as a community organizer using a staple gun on uh, bulletin boards around Chicago. But 15,000 years ago, Mr. Obama, there was a glacier that covered all of North America. Uh, are we to blame the Industrial Revolution for its demise? Or do you know, Mr. Obama, that 10,000 years ago, the land that you live in was buried in over 300 feet of ice? And it's all gone just because of those stupid mastodons passing gas. If only Al Gore and O'Dummy were around, then this might have been prevented. They could have stopped this from happening. They could have, I guess, interned the mastodons. And they could have told them to stop eating carbon-based plants. And then him and uh, Al Gore and O'Dummy would scratch their heads and they could have saved the world. And we would still have 300 feet of ice over North America. This is the savage nation, what sad times we live in. That a con man like this, a man as thin as this intellectually, can march around the globe doing so much damage, including the damage of promoting a fraud like this in, in open daylight. Now, <clears throat> I want to go on to the next one. Today, John Kerry gave a long intellectual speech on why we should give Iran the bomb while saying we, we're doing this to make sure they don't get the bomb. And it was interesting. I didn't listen to the whole thing. It became boring. And I watched him and I got agitated because I saw him lying. His eyes become shaded. His eyes become shadowy. I remember him throwing his Vietnam era medals over the wall and joining the anti-American protesters. I remember what an evil man uh, John Kerry really is, what a slimy creature he really is. But let's put aside my distaste for this pack of left-wing fanatics that are ruining America and the world. And let's look at the words themselves. Let you liberals who listen to me, because you know secretly you agree with most of what I say, even though you say I don't agree with you. I'm going to give you an example of how John Kerry gave away why, why he and Obama, mainly Obama, has appeased and capitulated to the mullahs in Tehran in clip number two on the Savage Nation. My friends, it just doesn't make sense to conclude that we should vote no now because of what might happen in 15 years, thereby guaranteeing that what might happen in 15 years will actually begin to happen now. Because if this agreement is rejected, every possible reason for worry in the future would have to be confronted now. Immediately. Stop. Stop. Listen to what John Kerry just gave away. Somebody put a, a, a poison pill in his speech. His speechwriter actually gave away the big lie. He said, if the agreement is rejected with Iran, every possible reason for worry in the future would have to be confronted now. That's precisely why it should be confronted now. This is precisely why Iran should be confronted now, when they are relatively weak. They know that. And the appeasing cowards in the Obama administration have capitulated to the worst terrorist nation on the earth exactly, exactly for that reason. They're passing the buck to future generations of leadership. They're selling us out to Iran now. The Obama-Iran axis of evil has just been exposed for what they really are. So those are two opening gambits on the savage nation by the way at the bottom of this hour 34 minutes after the hour we have the great donald trump on the savage nation and i'm opening this line up right now to uh i don't want to talk about donald trump now i want you to call about global warming i want you to call about the iran deal and after mr trump leaves us we can talk about mr trump and what he said because i'm going to ask him some very important questions and I'll tell you right now what I intend to ask him on, on one front. I'm going to ask him about tariffs because I wrote in my book many years ago, many, it seems like many years ago, it's only a few years ago, my book, uh, Trickle Up Poverty, which I think was published in 2010. It's still a wonderful book, has a great deal of information, published 2010. In Trickle Up Poverty, in my 37-point plan to save America and the world, Point 18 was imposed tariffs on China. We must draw a line in the sand with regard to China in order to loosen their stranglehold on our economy, I wrote, by imposing a 20% tariff on all goods produced in China. 
Now, <clears throat> Mr. Trump, I think, agrees with me on tariffs. There are people in the media who claim to be conservatives who are so lacking in knowledge, it's frightening. They spent their whole life inside government, hiding behind microphones. They never did business. They never sold lemonade. They don't know anything about business. They know nothing about export-import. Uh, I know a lot about export-import. And I know an awful lot about international business. And who knows more about international business than Donald Trump? Some thin-brained phony on the radio with a microphone who tells you that he's a conservative and then attacks Trump on tariffs, espousing the line of the Club for Growth, the most anti-conservative group in America. How much can you people take until you open up your eyes to who you're listening to? But let's put that aside. Tariffs, tariffs, tariffs. Do you know that if you export products to Mexico that you have to pay a tariff to get your product into Mexico? Are you aware of that? Are you aware that if you try to sell something into China, you have to pay a tariff to the Chinese government? Are you aware of that? How, how naive can you be to listen to people in the radio business who pose as conservatives and then espouse liberal viewpoints on business because they don't understand business? So the first thing I'm going to ask Mr. Trump is about tariffs. And let him explain to you, the audience, how tariffs work to the advantage of the American worker and the American industrial base, which has been hollowed out by these sellouts in government who have told us, oh, no, we don't need tariffs. It'll sell off, set off a trade war. Oh, no, that's the exact opposite of what we need. We need tariffs. You want a trade war? Give them a trade war. Give them a trade war. Hollow out their industrial base. Let's see the factories closing in China. Let's see the factories closing in Mexico. And let's see the factories opening in America. That will solve a lot of problems, wouldn't it? The uh, inner city crime problem we have would be reduced because they'd have a job to go to, as, they once, as their fathers once did. A lot of reasons to impose tariffs that you can't find in a textbook of conservatism 101. And so if you want to talk about these topics, the phone number is 855 407282. Remember, if you get on this show with me, you'll reach more people than you've met in your entire life. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800 B U Y C O I N. So there he is again. Uh, now pushing the lie about global warming again to see what he can r rake out of the economy before he leaves for his friends who make billions of dollars in industries surrounding the anti-fossil fuel mania. There is more money right now in solar than there is in heroin. There is more money now in this than there was in drugs. And don't think that criminals have not gone into the solar business. I can't be specific because I still have a number of years left on the earth that I respect. Uh, God has given me to help disseminate the truth, but I've never seen anything like this. This man's mania for lies and to pull the wool over people's eyes is so shocking. The climate change lie is one of the greatest lies in history. So he goes there and he sees a glacier that's melting. And he says that uh, here's a post mark 1926, and then there's a post reading 1951, and shows that the glacier is retreating. And what this community organizer didn't learn in the gutters of Chicago as he was organizing the rabble to get into his first uh, office is that ICE, uh, ICE has been retreating for thousands of years. Uh, he didn't learn that in the gutters of Chicago from Saul Alinsky. He didn't learn a lot of things. And I guess he didn't even learn the basics that they teach a kid in the third grade. You see, Mr. Obama, when ice warms above 32 degrees Fahrenheit for any length of time, it actually melts. That un you understand how that works? You see how that works? And Mr. Obama, do you understand that we understand that this is a big lie? That we, we know that 15,000 years ago there was a glacier that covered all of North America. And it's been retreating ever since. Mr. Obama, please study some basic science and you will see a phase in climate called the Little Ice Age. Did you know about the Little Ice Age and what happened in Europe and North America? Of course, your ancestors were in here, nor were mine. The Native Americans were here. And they have historical records of the Little Ice Age when they all almost froze to death. And what happened